Buddy, I would love your your perspective on what Josh just said. Look, I mean, this is actually one of those situations where there are no good options. I know that's a bit of a cliche in times of conflict, but, um, you know, so yes, the, the Israeli government is saying eliminate Hamas. Now, no one has actually really explained what that means in practice. You you um, decapitate the leadership, uh, kill, kill them, arrest them, whatever it happens to be over the coming months. Um, Hamas isn't just its leadership. There are mid and low level um, cadres. There are members. There are symp sympathizers and supporters. I wouldn't want to overstate when people say, well, all of Gaza is Hamas. It's absurd, but it is a significant movement. So it's very hard to go in and say, well, we are going to completely erase Hamas and that is it and then start anew. That's never the way conflicts work. So. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see in practice what Israelis really mean by that and how far they're willing to go. Um, the danger with bringing in the pa the Palestinian Authority, ideally, that would be a good option. But anyone who comes into Gaza now from outside, whether it's the West Bank or supported by our Ar our Arab partners, is going to be seen as coming in behind Israeli bombs. There's a fundamental legitimacy question. How do you actually make the new leadership, whoever they are, legitimate to Palestinians in Gaza? These are just very, very thorny questions. And I worry that Israel is not necessarily going to be very constructive in that. But it does require then a very strong um, US role that is balanced and actually takes Palestinian politics seriously. And that hasn't really been something the U.S. has done in in recent years. Um, so I I don't know. It is worth. I'll just mention one quote that I mentioned that I cited in my column just to show how unwilling the Biden administration was to deal with Palestinians or really anything in the Middle East up until uh, up until quite recently. Jake Sullivan, National Security Advisor, eight days before Hamas's massacre. Um, he boasted to an audience saying, quote unquote, the Middle East region is quieter today than it has been in two decades. This was Biden's policy. Manage the Middle East. Don't address the deeper sources of conflict. Try to pivot as much as possible towards China and great power competition and outsourcing U.S. policy to Arab autocrats. And the idea was let them manage and keep things under control. But unless you have a real strategy, unless you have a vision for the Middle East, the deeper grievances are going to come out. This is a very messed up region. It's dominated by autocrats. People have been suppressed for such a long time. There has to be a vision. And my hope is that the Biden administration, after, after all of this is, is said and done, will actually try to present a vision to the region that is actually amenable not only to Israelis, but also to at least some Palestinians. I'm not holding my breath, but that's my hope. 